Well, thank you, Mitra. Nice to meet you. Thank you for talking to us. Of course. Let's kick off with this whole goat thing. <laughs> In the film, you're half human, half goat. Mm -hmm. Was that all special effects, or did you have to wear hairy trousers? It was, well, <laughs> to both. I had to wear hairy trousers, hairy pants, and uh, it was really hot sometimes. Uh, one time I was on set, and I was asleep, and I was sunbathing, just chilling, you know, right? Just out there enjoying the sun, and my pants started smoking, so I told him, like, I really wanted to, I really wear the, uh, the, 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 the tight pants because, uh, you know, they were like, they gave me, like, ballet pants, and what happened is, or tights, and they would have markers, and they would draw my legs in after, so it was really, it was cool because, you know, you was kind of wonder like, what they, like, how the legs are going to look, and the special effects guys, they drew, like, other legs, and they're like, chicken legs, and Scorpio legs, and I was like, he could do anything he wanted to with it, so it was, I was, it was really cool to see the, the final result. And I just need to let you know, in Britain, pants mean underwear. Oh. We say trousers. Trousers. So, so my trousers. So you weren't wearing hairy underwear. I was wearing, wearing hairy tr trousers. <laughs> trousers. I thought trousers were yeah. underwear. No. Oh, okay. Trousers. Pants, yeah. So you guys. So you weren't wearing hairy underwear, it was hairy trousers. I was wearing hairy, hairy trousers. trousers. And they, they caught on fire. So, yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> Percy Jackson is a demigod. <laughs> Thank what you for the dem <laughs> Just so you know that you're telling everyone you have dairy pants. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> are you a demi-animal? or what, What's the situation with it? I mean, who are your parents if you're half goat? Well, he's a pan. Pan is the god of the satyrs. Okay. And uh, he, they think he, there's a whole other backstory with satyrs. Yeah. That they think he's dead, but uh, if you read the books, well, I don't want to tell it too much, but no, no. you should read the books and find out with Grover. What, he, what happens with Pan? He's the god of the satyrs, but satyrs are different. Satyrs are, uh, you know, they're they're they're, they're hormonally driven creatures. At the same time, uh, they 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 serenade and they 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 always they're always with the nymphs in, in in the mythology. That's what they you know that's what they do. So we wanted to play it where it was still kind of young with the teenagers, but not too you know hormonal driven. So it won't it be you know disgusting. So it's kind of like your average teenager that you know chase girls, but at the same time. He has to protect Percy, so he still has a lot of heart. He's not, he's not, you know, he's not a sleeve ball at all. Don't forget that. Talking of disgusting, that Medusa head is quite disgusting. Of course, yeah. you didn't. It was all special effects. What were you holding when you're holding? No, we was holding like fake snakes that they put like this, like goo and I don't know what it's called, like this goo on it, so it was still was sticky, but yeah, it was nasty. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm good on that. What's it like having to act when loads of things are put in afterwards in special effects? It's great, but it is very... you got to have the right director for that. And I'm happy Chris Columbus is so used to, you know, doing special effects movies because if you're looking at a tennis ball the whole time and they're telling you that it's fire being thrown at you or fire being, being you know, a, a dragon is breathing fire on you and you're like, no, there's a tennis ball that's up there and... And then you know, oh yeah, I gotta act. So <laughs> that's the good thing about it. Yeah, it, it, it makes your imagination go to the playground and just you know you can do whatever you want with it. I hear you're a comedian as well. That too. Is that where you got the funniest lines in the film? Um, I, I improv a lot, but at the same time I want to stay true to to the character. I don't want to do too much comedy because it'll take away from the movie. So uh, I want to make sure it has the balance of comedy and, and acting, which is hard to do. Because, you know, the best thing about this movie is, like, for, for what I like, as far as my character, I got to do action, I got to be funny, and, you know, you got to do it all, you know, so. And now, one of the lines that you had in the movie was that demigods are everywhere, they've even mm -hmm. got to the White House. Are you saying President Obama is a <laughs> I just said the White House, it could be President Obama, it could be, you know, <laughs> it could be, you know, what, who knows, it could be any, see the movie thing. So you didn't have someone in mind? <laughs> see, I mean, see the movie, about, what, 12 years from now, There's been loads of comparisons with this film and Harry Potter. Our new really? reviewers are y'all comparing like Harry you've Potter? never heard that. No. no. If you bring on Chris Columbus, there are going to be some comparisons. <laughs> Does that annoy you, or is no. it quite flattering because that's so successful and you kind of want to? It's very flattering because Harry Potter imitate is, that success. It's like oh, you somebody say hey, you act like Eddie Murphy or Will Smith or whatever, you'll be excited like oh, thank you. That's a really cool thing to say. These guys are very successful, uh, you know, actors and uh, comedians, so to say we are like Harry Potter, let's, let's keep saying that because you know why it's going to, Harry Potter did very well, and if you can enjoy this movie, uh, Harry Potter can definitely enjoy this movie, but I think they're different, but it's still the same, Chris has a certain style that, that stays classic, and he's good at that, and he's good at making people, uh, he's 
good at bringing everybody together, families, you know, teenagers, young adults, and kids. That's hard to do. I don't care what nobody says. To have a universal movie that everybody can enjoy. So. If this film becomes as big as the book mm -hmm. and as big as Harry Potter, you guys could be chased around by teenagers so? constantly. Did you not talk about that? Uh, the prospect of being <laughs> no, but we a teen heartthrob? Yeah, yes, yeah, teen heartthrob is always weird to me, but um, at the same time, it's like, I mean, we was at this... this you could be the next Zac, Zac Efron. Me? Yeah. Thank you. I yeah. would love that. <laughs> I, would love, I would love to work with Zac. He's really cool, too. I, um, yeah, I, that'd be cool. I'm just... Right now, I'll make sure that we do good work. I mean, all that stuff comes later. I was I flew into London and I saw my face on the bill. Keep in mind, this is different from the one in the states, so you don't know oh, okay. what you see in the international. You just you wake up and your face is everywhere. So it's kind of like you guys gotta take it one day at a time. And you signed up for more? Yeah, yeah. If we do, if you guys like it, if you guys, yeah. Here, keep saying that. It's fine. Let it be successful, like everybody. So we can do so many more. It's it, it was a great experience to, to work on this film and, and uh, it, it, if you guys like it, you know, it seemed like everybody likes it so it's pretty cool. Brandon, thank you very Such much for the Thank you. Thank you.